A lot many students ask about NEET PG examinations, how to prepare these examinations, and how to get a good rank, a high percentile for um, the better colleges and better choices. Now, as far as the strategy is concerned, you have to remember that there are no shortcuts to success. Hard work is important fact, and you have to work very diligently, you have to work very intelligently. That means you have to combine your strategy and your time very effectively. Uh, the first and the foremost thing I would recommend the students is never be late because you have to start at an early period of time and you have to give 8 to 12 months for your preparation minimum. Uh, why? Because there are 19 subjects and revising and going through 19 subjects happens to be a bit um, not difficult, I would not use the word difficult, happens to be a bit heavy. And once you do multiple subjects, you have to have an effective time for revising other subjects as well. You cannot do a subject in the month of January and expect that in the month of December you will be knowing uh, much about it. So you have to give time for revisions in between as well. You have to be updated with most of the subjects and have an effective strategy. So the best thing is you start early. Early start is the best. Now, what comes after early start is that how you just um, make a strategy. I would just recommend taking one clinical subject and one preclinical subject together. What that does, that strengthens your basics. Say you are doing anatomy and you are doing surgery. That will supplement each other. So, and that makes it interesting as well because uh, to some students, one subject is to their liking and the other subject is not to their liking. So you have to combine like-minded and allied subjects together. That's how I would recommend. This is not uh, something which is a prototype, but this is how I would just suggest the students to go about the studies, physiology and medicine, because they happen to be correlated with each other, uh, biochemistry and pediatrics. That's how uh, I would study it, and that's what my experience suggests. And you have to remember that by uh, the time you have to do 19 subjects, there's nothing which is important and not, uh, something which is not important. All the subjects tend to be import important, so you cannot afford to miss any subject. Because there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of competition, marks matter, and your placement depends upon the marks. You cannot afford to take any subject very really lightly. So you have to focus on all the subjects. Now, again, these are some things, there is something planning and all those things you strategize and how you revise and how you practice your MCQs. You have to have an effective time for all these things. You have to prepare a timetable, but one fundamental fact is that you have to prepare MCQs. You have to go through their MCQs because studying MCQs, clinical based MCQs would give you an edge over the others. Because nowadays, the trend is that they ask you conceptual questions based on clinical scenarios. One-liners and memory-based questions, they are not that important now. Uh, now, these uh, charts are out, these figures are out, these statistics are out, and uh, you sometimes wonder about the statistics. Now you can see there's some chart in front of me and it shows anatomy number of expected questions, physiology number of expected questions, biochemistry number of expected questions in a similar manner, pharmacology, medicine and all those things. Now I would pose you a question. Uh, you may be asked uh, something about femoral hernia or inguinal hernia. Now why do you put this question? Is it a question of anatomy or is it a question of surgery? There are no boundaries. I again repeat it, there are no boundaries in medical sciences. So this subject can be placed in both anatomy and this subject can be placed both in surgery. Now, cardiac output, cardiac cycle. You may be asked a question on cardiac output and cardiac cycle. It may be from physiology or it may be from cardiology in medicine. So again, these uh, things, these statistics should not uh, just, you should not get carried away. The fact is that you're basic concepts should be very well organized. You should have a thorough knowledge of anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry, and that will lay a strong formation for your higher subjects as well. So uh, this mark allocation is not of that importance. Again, I will tell you, you can get in obstetrics, gynecology, in orthopedics, in ENT, questions from anatomy. And in 
medicine, you can get questions from pharmacology. The drug best suited for this clinical condition is the, um, the drug best suited for uh, another clinical condition is. Is this a question of medicine or pharmacology? I think it's a question of both combined medicine and pharmacology. So you can be have a large component, a large share of medicine questions from anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, even social and preventive medicine in other, in other branches as well. So social and preventive medicine, cholera, the viral uh, 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 diseases, the bacterial infections, mumps, things like those, they can be asked in pediatrics, they can be asked in medicine. So you have to remember that you have to strengthen both your pre and paraclinical subjects as well. And then comes the last is the clinical subjects like medicine, surgery, and in medicine, surgery also we have allied branches. So I will not go through this uh, uh, statistical table with that much of a um, weightage because it hardly matters. Now, one important thing you have to remember that a profound number of questions are asked. You can see over here, medicine and allied, surgery and allied. You can see 18, 18, maybe 20, 20, um, because it's not exact. So that means it is not medicine only. It is dermatology and mineralogy. You can be having so many questions from dermatology. In surgery also, you can be having uh, questions from ENT, orthopedics, and anesthesia has also been put in there. So it is not medicine. It is medicine and allied branches. It is surgery and allied branches. So if you subtract those, these allied branches, again, the number of questions in medicine will be same as it is in uh, the other branches. But basically, you have to remember that there are these major subjects and minor subjects. Major subjects like anatomy, like pathology, like social and preventive medicine, like medicine, like surgery, they happen to be major subjects. And your focus and time should be on these. Now, what will aid you in just uh, getting good merit and uh, you have to revise, you have to go through the previous year's papers and uh, you have to go through the previous year's previous papers, that's one important point. And second thing is that you have to just change your strategy because clinical scenarios, a question will be asked in the form of clinical scenarios and that is why most of the students fail because what do they do? They read the text and they just go on reading the text and they do not arrive at a diagnosis. They do not know what the clinical condition is about. And that is why I come into play. I will be just making it clinical based uh, studies going ahead in my future classes. Now, questions from obstetrics, pathology, mycology, gynecology, ENT, and pharmacology. This is the research we have made, and we have been seeing that there are many questions from mycology, which you would not take seriously up till now. For ENT, you would not take, and pharmacology, where prominent need PG2022, and questions based on COVID, and the latest drugs, and the latest diagnostic techniques have been asked, and you have to be updated with the latest that's important. Now, difficulty, moderate level um, papers to face, you do not face their tough uh, papers, you do not face very easy paper, the standard is surely going up. So I would not focus, it's, it, it applies to all, all the, all the subjects. So you have to keep your standards very high and that will help you achieve a good rank. Now, again, clinical knowledge. I emphasize the fact clinical knowledge and clinical based scenarios, you have to have a concept. Without concept, uh, you cannot do well. You cannot do well. So that's it. So you can see 60% to 70% of the questions were clinical based and the very few based on one liners and memory, as I told you previously. So general medicine, preventive and social medicine, and pharmacology based questions. So they test you the real standards, how you implement your knowledge in clinical practice. That's important. Forensic, ophthalmology, and ENT. They cannot be neglected, but you get a less number of questions from these topics. But you have to remember that you have to go through this topic. You cannot effort to miss any subject as well. And image-based questions. There's a lot of hue and cry about image-based questions, but they form just 10 to 20% only. That is a significant chunk, but don't just focus on uh, image-based only. But one thing I would advise you, just go through your standard text. I emphasize the fact that standard text is the best. Go through the images, recapitulate these images, memorize those images, and that will aid you a lot in getting good merit and answering the questions rightly. Then this is this graphs, uh, the subject wise distribution. Again, I would not focus much on this. This can vary. This can, this is subject to change. This depends upon uh, how the computers just arrange the questions and uh, how the questions are coming into your system. That's all a random allocation. And I will not take this graph very seriously. 
So basically, uh, going uh, back, uh, understand the latest concepts in the NEET examination. What is the pattern? What's the marking, negative marking, and uh, the maximum number of marks per question? So there's a concept of negative marking. You cannot just go on and just um, make uh, assumptions. So you have to be pretty sure that rather than answering an incorrect uh, in an incorrect manner, it is better not to answer. So that is far better. So advice from topers, I would recommend previous years I just ma mentioned you make effective notes wherever you feel the difficulty. You just make notes, make points, and that helps you a lot. And multiple revisions and recap, not only videos, text as well. So that is how I would just advise you, suggest you to go about your examinations. And then you have to remember that you just have to set your goals and luck luck should play a lesser important role you should not leave things up to luck you should just uh, work hard and that is how you can achieve your goals thanks a lot